All right, thank you, Mr. Buckles. Uh, it is uh, a pleasure to be with you all this evening. I am uh, Mr. Kyle Keating, serving as Dean here at Providence. Uh, there is much to cover tonight, so we'll get into it. Uh, my section that I'm gonna discuss right now is drop off and pick up procedures. Now, one thing you'll notice is if you've already downloaded the Providence app, there's gonna be a button in the top left that says all school orientation information. And in that uh, will be a document that already details all the procedures I'm about to describe. So you can follow along in the app if you wish. Uh, that document will also be available in the EPAC tomorrow. Uh, so everything I'm about to say will be in written form to you. Uh, so you can take notes if you want, um, but we are also delivering all this in written form to you as well because it's a lot. Uh, drop off and pick up is one of the things that will be um, most uh, impacted by our desire to maintain our safety plan. Um, and so uh, the, the biggest change or one of the biggest changes is that as students arrive and are picked up from school, they'll be asked to wear masks and that includes even our younger students. And then of course, any parents that are entering the building uh, while dropping off or picking up their kids will also need to wear masks at that time. So I'm gonna start by walking through our drop-off procedures. Our drop-off procedures are actually going to begin before you leave the house. And they begin before you leave the house uh, by you submitting screening questions for us. Um, one of the recommendations of county health officials is that any school that's opening uh, asks screening questions that are uh, basic questions about whether a, a student has had a temperature, particular symptoms, or if they've been exposed to someone with a positive uh, case of COVID-19. And so rather than asking all of those questions of each family in person every day, uh, a process that would, would probably make our drop-off time last far too long, uh, we're asking you that you would asking you to submit them digitally. And the way that the simplest way to submit them digitally is through the app. And so this is really the, the place where it's, it's particularly important for you to download uh, the Providence Family app. And that is that if you look in your app store, that's the title, it'll be Providence Family app. And you'll know it's our app because it has our logo on it. When you open the app, you're gonna see a button that says uh, COVID-19 screen, COVID screening questions. Uh, and when you click on it, it's gonna ask you to log in to your parents' web uh, or Fax Family Portal login. It's, uh, it used to be called Parents Web, it's now called Fax Family Portal. Um, that's the login that you'll use there. It's the same login that you would have used um, for uh, other, other parts of your Providence experience. And so once you log in, you're going to, on the left, there's gonna be a menu option. You're gonna go down to web forms and there's gonna be a COVID response form. When you click on that, uh, the names of your children will appear and then you'll have to select each one of them, submit answers to four questions, and then do that for each of your students. It sounds a lot like a lengthy process. Once you've done it once, twice, it won't take more than just a few minutes. Um, and what we're asking you to do is to do that actually before you leave the home. Um, because what, it, what will happen for us at the school is we'll get a report at eight o'clock when we go to do a uh, drop off of all the families that have uh, submitted it and then those who haven't yet and any family that hasn't submitted it yet will have to ask those questions of you in person. So you're submitting those questions online to us in advance is going to enable us to, to have a much more streamlined drop off process. So that's the screening questions. We're also going to provide within um, the, the Providence app and in the EPAC tomorrow, some step-by-step some step -step instructions to submitting those screening questions. So if me explaining it to you just now felt difficult, uh, that's okay. We'll provide some more step-by-step -step instructions to help you get there. And then once you've done it once or twice, obviously, uh, you know, it'll be old hat once we get into um, you know, the second week of the school year. So drop-off timing is actually not going to change substantially. Uh, students are gonna be permitted to enter the building at 8 a.m. as in the past. We are gonna extend the drop-off time. So previously it used to be drop-off begins at 8 a.m. and goes till 8.10. We're gonna extend that from 8 a.m. to 8.15. That's to uh, accomplish a couple things. We're gonna be doing more drop-off by the side entrance, which I'll talk about in, in, in the moment, a moment. And, uh, and also to allow for uh, screening questions that we might ask uh, in the morning. Uh, we do ask that parents would not drop off students at the main entrance uh, to congregate and wait up until 8 a.m. In the past, families have done that. It's not been a problem, uh, but this year we're asking you not to do that so that we don't have students from a variety of different cohorts 
uh, congregating and mingling in close quarters on those front entrance stairs. Uh, Drop-off location. So our preference is that families would use the drop-off line along the side entrance of the building to drop off their students. In order to access that line, you're actually going to enter the far parking lot back by the field, uh, so the furthest uh, spot away from the school building. And then you'll proceed around the outside of that parking lot to the far side of the building um, and, and drive down the driveway along the west side of the building. If me describing this all to you with words is confusing, that's understandable. There's a map uh, that's on the last page of these drop-off pickup instructions that will be very helpful for you as well. Uh, so that's our preference is that you would use that, uh, that drop-off line. That's whether you're um, dropping off a grammar school student or an upper school student. Now there is the alternate option that families may use the main entrance. And here are the cases where we're uh, you know, asking you to consider, we're asking you to limit uh, using that main entrance for these cases. Uh, one, if you're an upper school student who's driving yourself, you have to park and we want you to walk in the main entrance like you normally would. Of course, if you're driving siblings, you can walk in with them as well. Uh, faculty members, when you bring your children, of course, you'll walk through the main entrance as well. Um, the, the third case would be if a student is entering with a parent who needs to enter the building for some specific purpose. Maybe they need to speak to a faculty member or a staff member. That will be permitted, but again, we're asking our parents to, to limit the amount of times they do that. Um, I, as I mentioned above, we are asking families not to drive up to the main door, drop your kids off, and drive off. If you're going to drop off your kids, i.e. not park, we're asking you to use that side entrance process. For the first two weeks of the school year, we uh, do want our pre-K and kindergarten parents to, to park and walk their kids to their classrooms so that they can get comfortable with their new school environment. Uh, we'll help them so that over the course of the first two weeks, they learn the building, they learn um, how to get from the side drop off to their classroom, those kind of things. But for those first two weeks, uh, we think it'd be in both the students and probably parents' best interests uh, to have uh, those students walk to their classroom. So if you're a parent of a, a pre-K or kindergarten student, uh, go ahead and park in the parking lot, walk in that main entrance, and then you'll be uh, allowed to, to walk your student down to their classroom. If you're an adult entering the building, um, we will always ask some basic screening questions. How are you feeling? Um, and, uh, and we will do a temperature screen check as well um, at that front door. Uh, after entering the building, grammar school students should proceed directly to their grade level cl classrooms. Uh, this is of course different from the past um, where they would have gathered in the multi-purpose room there to head straight to their grade level classrooms. Upper school students uh, should proceed to their lockers first to drop off backpacks and supplies. Uh, then they can hang up any coats or store athletic uh, bags in uh, particular designated places. The high schoolers will continue to use the coat rooms. The seventh and eighth graders will have a different designated space for coats and other supplies that don't fit in their lockers. Uh, if you're an upper school student who wishes to uh, have your locker or have your lunch in the milk cooler, you'll just place it in the milk cooler at that point. You'll get your books and supplies for your first class and you'll proceed to the sanctuary and sit in cohorts. So the seventh and eighth grade will be on one side of the sanctuary, the ninth through twelfth will be in a separate side of the sanctuary. Of course, during all this time, upper school students, you'll be required to wear a mask. If you arrive late uh, or if you're a parent dropping your student uh, off outside the normal drop-off hours, you have two different options. You can park and uh, head to the main entrance with your student and then a staff member in the office will meet you at the door and let the student in. Uh, and that will count as checking that student in. The second thing you can do is simply drop your student off at the main entrance, uh, have them buzz in by themselves and then just call the main office uh, to let them know that you've dropped your student off and you're checking them in. So some of those previous sign my student in procedures will look a little bit different um, and will involve either calling the office if you're dropping your student off or taking your student up to that front door where um, an office staff person will let them in. Uh, upper school students can still check themselves in, but as a reminder, any late arrival from an upper school student does require a parent to call in. That's drop off. Uh, pickup. So grammar school, I'm going to talk about this in terms of grammar school and then upper school pickup. For grammar school, uh, we're asking that grammar school students typically be picked up uh, in the line by the side of the building, just as we've asked you to drop them off there. 
Uh, as with drop off, in order to access the line, you're going to enter that far parking lot by the field uh, and then proceed along to the driveway on the west side of the building. That pattern is the same for drop off and pick up. Again, the map will be helpful to you there. Um, again, we're noting that pre-K and kindergarten parents can park and enter the main entrance so that you can pick your kids up from the classroom at the end of the day for those first two weeks, after which we'll have prepared them to, to make the walk to the side entrance so you can pick them up along that side uh, drop uh, pickup line. Uh, grammar school pickup will begin at 3.05, so the touch earlier than in the past uh, with the first car in the pickup line. We're actually asking that that first car would stop at the corner of the building as opposed to going all the way down because what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, radio those, uh, those numbers that each family is assigned for grammar school pickup. We're gonna radio those earlier in the line because students have to proceed from uh, their, grammar, their grammar school classrooms instead of just the multi-purpose room. So in order to uh, not have this delay of, oh, we've radioed and now we have to wait for a student to proceed all the way, we're gonna radio those numbers in early. So what that means is if, if you can remember the first car in the line, this is gonna be difficult for those who've done this for many years, stop at the corner of the building so we can radio, start radioing in numbers at that point. And that's where the line will form and then it'll proceed into that back parking lot. Again, the map will hopefully be of um, some help to you there. It is very important that the number that you're assigned and will be given uh, at supply drop-off on Monday uh, for, for pickup or for pickup uh, is displayed prominently in your vehicle um, so that the person that's radioing those numbers in can see it. Um, so, so we are asking that you'd actually show the card that we give you as opposed to, to, to signing numbers or anything like that. Uh, just to alleviate confusion, confusion to speed up the process so that we're able to get everybody picked up in, um, in an efficient manner. Uh, it's our, actually our preference that grammar school students that have an upper school sibling, that that upper school sibling would be the one to pick up the grammar school student from their classroom and then proceed out the main entrance to where mom or dad have parked their car. Um, this is going to simplify some of the processes so that a family doesn't have to go through the line and then loop back around. So if, you're, if you have a grammar school student and an upper school student and you're gonna pick them up, have that upper school student go pick up their grammar schooler from their classroom and then they can exit the building out the front and come to your car. Uh, all grammar school students should be picked up by 3.20 p.m. at the latest. So drop off begins at 3.05. Uh, everyone should be picked up by 3.20 uh, at the latest. If there are students that has, have still not been picked up by 3.20, uh, we'll make a phone call uh, to families to confirm that someone's on their way to pick up that student. As we mentioned in the pandemic response plan, we aren't uh, able to offer any school organized aftercare option this year. But if you do have aftercare needs, please do uh, reach out to an administrator or to the school office, uh, and we'll work with you to find some sort of suitable arrangements for your family. So that's grammar school pickup. Upper school pickup. Upper school students will be dismissed from their seventh hour class at 315 after their end of day chores have been completed. That's the same as normal. Upper school students who drive themselves are gonna gather their stuff uh, from their last class, their lockers, and then exit the school's main entrance. That's the same as normal. Uh, parents picking up an upper school student will be asked to park and wait for the upper school student to come out to them uh, in the parking lot. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it's our preference that any upper school students that have a younger sibling in the grammar school would be the ones to actually go pick up their grammar school student from the classroom as opposed to having the parent come in the building. Uh, if you're going to pick up an upper school uh, parent and you're in a park in the parking lot, we ask that you be there by 3.15 p.m. at the latest. Uh, and this is a change. Previously, families perhaps came later and their students waited and, and then just walked out when the car got there. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is prevent several different cohorts from, from sort of just being stuck at that main entrance waiting for mom and dad. And so what we're asking our upper school families uh, to do is to be in the parking lot parked by 315 so that when the bell rings and your student's done, they can proceed directly out those doors to your car. Again, we don't have aftercare or a designated space for upper school students after school hours. So we're asking that all upper school students be out of the building by 3.30 p.m. at the latest. The last thing to note with drop off is if you're coming to pick or pick up, if you're coming to pick up your kid a little bit early, um, that's fine. Uh, we just ask that you call the school office and then we'll walk them out to the main entrance so you can pick them up. Of course, upper school students who drive themselves will be allowed to leave campus early uh, as long as they have uh, that excused from a parent. 
All right, that was a lot. That's drop off. It is and pick up. It is all in a document that you can access on the app right now or in the EPAC tomorrow. I'm going to pass it back to Mr. Buckles, who's going to talk a little bit more about our academics for the coming year.